G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Boom Guru. Today I've got a pretty fun little video for you. Um, something that I found out today and I just had to share it the moment I found it. Um, it's how to synchronize Rhino and Grasshopper to your mobile device and back and forth. Pretty crazy. Um, so, wait, what? <laughs> so, I'm going to show you today uh, a cool little app that's actually free, um, which will let you control sessions of Rhino, but also tune parameters of Grasshopper and feed it back into an augmented reality feed on your mobile, tablet, Oculus, HoloLens. Um, it lets you move elements by hand if you wish, um, or you can also just tune and adjust Grasshopper script values. Pretty amazing. Um, haven't really seen something like this before. So the way that this works is an app called Phologram, which is built specifically for Rhino and Grasshopper. Definitely go and check out their website. Um, some really great community discussion related to the tool as well. From what I can see, this has been in the, in the making for a couple of years, but I've only just come across it myself. So it lets you essentially send mixed reality experiences to your device. And this can be AR or VR devices, or even just iOS or Android. So they've got pretty much all the bases covered. Um, pretty crazy, must say. Um, th the great thing about it is actually a lot of features do come free with this app. Now there are some pretty big ones that you'll want if you do want to actually subscribe to this. Probably the biggest one being that you can only use three parameters from Grasshopper to influence the results of what you see. However, for a viewing app, it's actually extremely competent. So I thought I'd demonstrate it to you today. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a mixed session, so I'm gonna be jumping between my computer and also my mobile device, um, which is gonna be a little bit tricky, uh, but we'll see how we go. So in this case, I'm just gonna dive straight in. Um, we're just gonna try and do a live demo. So I'm in Rhino um, with a good old Batman model. I'm just gonna go back until before I started moving some things around. So this model is relatively straightforward. It's just a bunch of meshes um, on different layers. I actually used this in a previous video to show you how to do custom Enscape asset content creation. I'll also show you a building model after as well, but I thought this is just a good, easy, rational model to process. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I've actually installed Phologram for Rhino, but also on my mobile app. All I have to do is just go to Phologram. So type this in as a command. This will bring up the Phologram window. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prompt this connect to a device, which gives me a QR code. Um, at this point, I probably need to restart my session of Phologram on mobile. So I'm just gonna to connect to a device and I'm gonna bring up my phone. I'm gonna grab that QR code. I'm now synchronized with Phologram, pretty cool. At this point, I'm probably gonna jump over to mobile. Um, so I'm gonna start, uh, I guess, walking around my room. In this case, you can see that the scale can be quite extreme depending how you change it. But I might just go to say 0.2. And I've just went and positioned my experience. I can reposition it just by resetting. I can tap somewhere to place my model. It's generating an AR grid for me. Pretty sweet. Gonna place my experience and there we go. My Rhino model um, isn't quite positioned right. I'll see if I can reposition it a little bit. Like any AR app, positioning can be a little bit of a challenge. There we go. And there is my Rhino model in my room. So it's pretty amazing. Um, now the crazy bit, maybe the scary bit too, depending how much you trust people in your model. What if I grab something? I can actually, I should be able to interact with my model. So I can move them around. I can rotate the plane by holding two fingers on the screen. I can also zoom in and out. So I have a good amount of control. Now that's pretty cool. What about this? I can enable cursor interaction. And I'm not sure if I have the setting enabled at the moment actually, but I was able to actually specifically move pieces of my model before. I'll just cross check if maybe I've got a setting disabled that enables this. Um, let's try this. So I believe at the moment I must have the setting disabled. Yeah, I've got the setting disabled. But there is the option to manipulate your, your model. I think I've got it turned off at the moment, but it does let you literally grab and move things around. In this case, it looks like I've somehow missed that feature. Maybe I'll just increase my interaction distance. Uh, it looks like in this case, I'm probably not gonna have access to that feature, but it definitely is possible. To be honest, it's probably a good thing that it's not working in this case, because it's a little bit worrying when you pick things up by accident. 
um, and change something in your Rhino model without expecting it to change. Uh, what I can do as well, I can look at layers as well. I believe in this case, the layers aren't quite correct, which is interesting. So the layers in this case, I believe actually I worked by material in this model. So what if I make a change in my live Rhino model? Let's go and create a layer. Uh, there we go. That's why. Let's just put, say, a bunch of geometry on a layer and turn these layers back on. So if I come back to my element, I should have layer interaction as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. Obviously pretty scary, um, but you can see that I do have that live connection. And as I change this, Rhino is also receiving those updates. Pretty trippy, right? What I can do as well, let's just open up, say, another model, maybe just a building project in this case. So I'm still in the same session. I've just opened a new model. So in this case, well, look at that. We're already in the next model. So we are synchronized between sessions. Um, so it's very instantaneous, very, very receptive to change. Um, in this case, I might just move around this model. Uh, there we go. So now it's letting me move some things around. Now it's a little bit scary because I can just grab things very unintentionally um, by accident. See, I just moved a piece of the roof. I'll grab this wall. So you can see that there is some, some risk depending how you use the app. Um, I can pick something, move it off. But assuming your Rhino model is pretty expendable, so maybe a copy, you can do some quite interesting interactions with the design. I can pick things off and move them around. So if you had enough coordination in your design, you could even do little basic test fits and just move these objects around. I can say, I want to place this bed here and then I can walk around it. Um, pretty, pretty cool, I must say. Um, but I guess we're going to come back and probably show one really amazing feature of this app um, that I've found as well which is a live grasshopper connection. So for now, I'm gonna sign out and go back to Rhino. And now I'm just gonna go back in. Uh, I'll just reopen my camera. So you just got to see a little bit of my apartment as well, or my bedroom. Um, I'm gonna close Fologram and what I'm gonna do is just create a new model. And I'm just going to make a large object millimeters, maximize my viewport. And I'm going to open up Grasshopper instead. Now I've got a little definition that I wrote here. It's a very simple one. It has three sliders that control the radius of a cone. And then it has three circles where I can change the height. So you can imagine this being a very simple building mass. Now. It's important to note in this case, there's a few little phologram symbols hanging around my model. This one's actually previewing the geometry inside phologram. This one here is synchronizing all those parameters that I collect. Now, every time I create a new parameter that could be an input, phologram detects it and adds this little sync parameters option. Now, remember I said before, you can only have three parameters at once. So I'm going to disable probably these parameters and this parameter, just so I have the top and the bottom radius and the height of the one in the middle. And I'm synchronizing my geometry, which is very cool. I'm going to turn off this transform. And let's just jump back into Fologram. So I'm ready to jump in again. So that's, that's how simple it is. We're just going to literally be jumping straight in in this case, I'm probably gonna have to start recording again. Looks like my Wi-Fi has dropped out, that's all right. So, I'm gonna restart Fologram. Okay, so um, I've just connected up my Grasshopper session and we have Grasshopper feedback into AR. <laughs> what the, check that out. That is, obviously it's a very basic form but it's in AR, and not only that, I can go and muck around with my parameters. 
I mean, what? Come on, this is this is this is pretty cool, right? I mean, obviously, I've only got three parameters available because I'm on the demo, but you can imagine how much fun you could have if you had a, a little bit more access to a few more parameters. Um, obviously, this would be a, a pretty powerful uh, design tool. Um, you could really, you could almost go out on site, put your feasibility building on site, and have a play with it. Uh, so the, the possibilities are, are, to be honest, like pretty, pretty endless to me. Um, just the fact that we have live connection to our grasshopper session is still um, pretty, pretty crazy to me. I haven't really ever seen anything quite like this. So um, yeah, very cool um, and very exciting. So I look forward to um, probably at least trying out one month of the full product and seeing what I can do with it. Um, but yeah, pretty neat, right? So there we go. Um, so a really interesting uh, application and there's a lot more tools on here as well. Um, so there's obviously a lot of ways to synchronize data and tags and materials, but you can also track things as well. So some really interesting potential of how this could be utilized in Grasshopper and very exciting, I think. So on the presentation for this will be on GitHub, but um, I do recommend that you do give the trial of Fologram a go, especially if you're a passionate Rhino or Grasshopper user, or you might even be able to use Rhino inside with this. So there's some pretty interesting applications. Um, and I know the video was a little bit unorganized. I just wanted to put this together to show people uh, something that I've been playing with recently and look forward to trying it out further in future. So if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I'm sure I'll find other zany apps like this one in future that have some interesting applications, no doubt. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care.